in the Nevada desert, a criminal closes in on his target. Tim, I'm in town. Where are you at? Did you bring your stake money? Excellent. I'll see you in 30. That was my partner. He's in town. We're ready to go to work. Card shark Ace Face is headed to Las Vegas to hit the one thing that makes this city world famous. It's casinos. I've been to Vegas over 100 times, and I've been an active part of taking $5 million off the casino tables. Vegas started it all. Other cities just don't have the reputation and the massive amounts of people dropping money. Every year, Vegas casinos turn over more money than most small countries. This enormous cash-rich business is a beacon for criminals, thieves, <laughs> cheats, working girls and gangsters from across the nation. This is my friend Louis. Uh, his last name is Slugger. When I crest that hill and I see those lights, it's a feeling of jubilance. You want to get out there and hit those casinos, it's a gold mine. On the outskirts of Vegas, another hustler is prepping for his next hit. Hello. What we have here is my baby. Yeah. I'm not moved but the money right here. This going to get everything started. Everybody going to listen when they see this here. Total silence. <laughs> Total silence when this come out. Yeah. When they see my baby, they know. There's a robbery in progress. It's trouble. We come for the money. <laughs> yeah. Short Fuse is a member of one of the West Coast's most feared gangs, the Crips. In my organization, I belong to the robbery crew. We go all across the United States. We do bank robberies, bar robberies. We even rob drug cartels. My favorite place to rob is casinos because you know the money's there. And you know there's a large sum of money there. In one casino, you can make anywhere from one to $20 million. Short Fuse is in town to find a casino his crew can take down. We would go with anywhere from five to 10 guys. Each guy is armed. This particular gun would be my favorite because when I cock him back, the sound alone gets everyone's attention. I get screams, I get nervousness. I've had people actually piss on themselves when they see this thing come out. It's not a game. But finding the right target takes careful planning. We put a lot of work in identifying the right casino. Sometime it could take anywhere from three to six months. We look at security schedule, how often Metro stops by, how much money is actually on the floor, how many security guards will there be, if we can turn someone who works inside the casinos, and the main thing is getaway routes. But getaway routes are often covered by hypervigilant CCTV. And even after months of planning, things can go wrong. I've actually had to shoot a security guard one time. The guy followed us. So we pulled over, gave it to him, just gave it to his whole car. 
got him off our backs and actually got away. It's not a game. It really is. This is really serious. If you get in the way of me and my money, I'm gonna let you down. To defend themselves against people like Short Fuse, Vegas casinos deploy around 5,000 security staff. Along with some pretty heavyweight high-tech surveillance. They know routines are a gift to thieves. So on the renowned Las Vegas Strip, the Aria Casino Make sure it changes its cash drops and collection times every day. We've never had a major robbery at the Aria, but that, that doesn't mean that it isn't going to happen in the future, and it doesn't mean we aren't going to keep looking for it. From a command center deep inside the Aria, Ted and his team watch over the casino's 150,000 square feet of gaming space. Security is about to start the kiosk drop. So what that means is we're pushing hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash through the casino. They're restocking the casino's ATMs. And the team's on high alert. Drop's moving. The team scans the casino floor for known threats. Do you recognize that guy? Because I think that we trespassed him a week ago. No, that is not him. Ted is also looking for unknowns who could pose a risk. We're watching for people who are wearing maybe baggy clothing or any kind of um, outfit that could be used to conceal a weapon. And we're looking for anyone who's concealing their face. We have to be able to identify you. There are no exceptions. No one escapes scrutiny. Ted continually checks for any signs of trouble. There's behaviors in body language called pacifiers. So when somebody's nervous, they do things that, that pacify them, that make them feel right. This is a pacifier. This is a pacifier. What's my next camera, Justin? They're on 122. Can you bring up camera 111? There's a guy who's been standing there for a while in a baseball hat. Can you look at what he's doing? The man is in range of the cash cart, and his baggy clothes could conceal a weapon. It used to be nervous behavior. He's acting suspiciously. He's standing there. He's not gambling. So I don't know what he's doing. He's a potential threat the team needs to track. He's displaying behavior that, that is uncommon, and it's not like everyone else around him. Look, there's his pacifier right there. His arms are crossed. Who walks with their arms like this? Nobody does that. The man is now just a few feet from the cash cart. Now he's walking away. He isn't looking at the drop. It looks to me like he's um, trying to figure out if he could get in that poker game or not. He's just been eyeballing poker the whole time. He's not a threat after all. The cash cart's now on the home stretch. All right, we just watched them complete the kiosk drop, and uh, as we hoped, nothing bad happened. And uh, we'll do it again tomorrow. Armed robbers can score big at the casinos. But with security being so tight, they can't score often. But card shark Ace Face All right. and his partner Bim have a very different approach. Two deck handheld game, huh? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. He's hit the casinos literally thousands of times without them even noticing. Excuse me, buddy, you paid me wrong. By keeping each of his wins small, 
he's made millions of dollars. The move we're practicing here is blackjack move, basically on a winning hand. I'm switching an original $10, two reds, for a $505 bet. Six, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thanks to switching the chips, Ace Face makes $500 per move. Each score is a thrill. The release of getting the move in successfully and paid is ecstatic. It is, it is the biggest rush that I've ever felt in my life. He gets that rush because what he's doing is seriously risky. The kind of run-ins we have are the dealer seeing the move, having someone on the table see the move, and telling the casino what they saw. And then there's the eye in the sky. If Ace Face thinks the casino is on to him, he heads for the door. Every casino, we have an escape route, and that involves ducking into the slots and hitting the nearest exit. Moving fast, it's all business. Let's go to work. Tonight, his partner Bim's role is to keep lookout and alert Ace Face if he needs to run. I can't see behind me. I need him on the other side of the pit to watch my back. Your security has to be the utmost importance. You can't relax for one second. The worst case scenario tonight is if both of us get arrested. Ace Face will be watching Bim closely for secret signals. I know it's uh, elementary, but it's, it's good to go over the, the signals. Chin. Everything's OK. He knows it's not. And a thumb in the mouth is get out of there as fast as you can. Of course. I hope we never use that. All right. Anytime you get in a jam, jump in a cab, meet me in the emergency meeting spot. Card shark Ace Face and his partner Bim are out to hustle the casinos of Las Vegas. Can you smell the money? Yep. The town's ripe for picking. They have their first target in sight. Once through the doors, they know they'll be under constant surveillance. I feel a little nervous and apprehensive. You walk into the place and you never know. You never know. But there is one place the casinos have no cameras at all. Their guest rooms. One breed of hustler exploits this weakness to devastating effect. I'm about to go out and get me some money. I'm about to find some guy that wants to me, and I'm going to get him for all that he has. Vixen is a thief who poses as a prostitute. She gets casino guests to invite her back to their rooms, where she robs them. It's called trick rolling. I have to look pretty from head to toe. Tonight, she's hitting the strip. Some trick rollers use guns to rob their victims. But Vixen has her own secret weapon. This is one of my little specialties. My drops, my eye drops. When ingested, certain brands of eye drops can induce a coma. I put two of drops in his drink, and he will go to sleep. And I can run off with his money but just two drops, because you might kill him. Vixen's hustle traumatizes her tricks and puts their lives at risk. She has no illusions about her situation. I know the casinos hate me. It, it messes up their business.
customers don't want to come back to Vegas after they get robbed. If they catch you doing it, you're going to jail. To avoid getting caught by the casinos, Vixen acts like a normal gambler. Back at the Aria, Ted's team has just noticed someone doing exactly the opposite. Surveillance. A gambler is buying in big. All right, two BJ26, spot five refused. He's in 1500, okay. And refusing to give ID. Ted, we have a refused gentleman. What game is that? What two table? Two BJ26. Okay, I got it. As a matter of protocol, Ted follows any gambler acting suspiciously like this. Justin, yes, sir. watch this same guy. Keep an eye on his play. Let's see what he's doing. Yes, sir. The odds of winning a hand in blackjack are less than 50%. All right, there's a big bet. Let's see. Let's see what we can see. But this gambler seems unusually lucky. Oh, he caught a good card. He just raised his wager four times his base bet. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Doubling down on eight. Another goofy move. And it was correct. He got a blackjack. How much was he betting? Um, looks like 75. This gambler's raising the stakes with every bet. Oh, he's come out with, what That's is that? 10 times his base bet. Okay. He's at 500 now. Oh, I see it. Oh, blackjack. So he goes, biggest bet, gets the ace. This is getting exciting, isn't it? The gambler's won five hands in a row. It looks like he's cheating, but how? So, I would like to know if he's marking these cards. Okay. Yes, sir. Card marking is a way that players gain information on the dealer's hand and the next card coming out. There's a lot of ways to do it. You can apply a mark or a daub. You can also nick the cards. I've seen people glue a piece of glass to their thumbnail and use that to mark the card. I got him going to his left cuff. On his sleeve? On his sleeve, yes, left sleeve. Yeah, there is something unusual here. So watch how he handles the cards. Looks like he's pressing down. Yes. Touching the cards. He could be marking. Yeah, he's showing all the signs. So take the camera to black and white and let's zoom in on the backs of these cards. Okay. The Aria's black and white surveillance cameras can spot marks invisible to the naked eye. Zoom in on that. Let's look at that. And the marks appear. Those are near infrared marks. That's right. Well, we need to call security. Yeah, get an ID shot of him and anyone else at the table. Okay. Casino surveillance boss Ted Whiting and his team have a suspect gambler in their sights. Okay, let me call the security boss and get him over there. It looks like he's cheating, marking the cards with ink from his sleeve that special contact lenses allow him to see. All right, security's on the way. They need to grab him. Many of them run away, some of them fight, and some of them go without any problem at all. I don't know what this guy's gonna do. Okay, security's arriving. Okay, make sure you're watching him. Okay. Now, right, here comes the backup for security, in case he does try to run or fight. To prove he's cheating. I wish he'd get to that sleeve. Security needs to catch him with the ink he's using. Oh, he's asking him to show the sleeve. Justin, are you getting in on that? Yes, sir. Here we go. You see it? Yep. There it is. Oh. 
Yeah, he was marking those cards. I think we have conclusive evidence here. Hey, Joe. Yeah, that's just what we thought. Great job, and tell everyone thank you. Our training exercise is now over. So, Justin and Misha, excellent job on that. That was pretty good sleuthing. Ted regularly tests staff with pretend cheaters to keep them on their toes, but they have to spot the scam for themselves. Today, they did it. You guys figured it out. That's exactly what I wanted you to do. So it just shows you that when we train on this uh, and we're ready to see it, we're going to see it. So good job. Thank you. But other casinos cannot always stay this sharp. Everything went smooth. I made the move slick, fast. It was spotless. Uh, the nose and the and the other uh, emergency sign never came in. Card shark Ace Face managed to hustle three blackjack hands. He had to lose some money to look legit, but he still made a healthy profit. The first casino we cleared 800, second casino cleared 300, so combined for the night, uh, we cleared 1100. Great night, nobody got snatched up, no steam, didn't burn up anything. They don't even know we're here. Armed robber Short Fuse doesn't have the luxury of escaping notice during a heist. But while selecting his target, he too must stay under the radar. Right now, we're getting close to the Las Vegas Strip. We're looking to hit something right here. I got my eyes on a big one. <laughs> Short Fuse sizes up each casino's exit points. You kind of want to look for casinos where you can blend into the crowd as you're getting away. I like people walking around everywhere, cars moving, motorcycles driving. I like a busy atmosphere. You keep a couple unmarked cars parked, you can hop out of one car, hop in the next one, and it's easy to get away. He's also wary of cops, with good reason. We had a job, but when we got there, there was a lot of metro cars. I wanted to leave, but my homeboys were like, we're hitting it anyway. So we go in there, and we take care of our business, and uh, we actually got into a big shootout with Metro. Some of my people went to prison, and one of those guys got shot. Short Fuse was lucky to escape with his life. Since then, the risks haven't gone away. They've gotten higher. I'm noticing the security is more beefed up. There's security guards everywhere, cops on horses, cops on motorcycles. There's more cameras. It's a real difficult situation. He figures making a getaway through the casino's front door is a no-no. But Short Fuse isn't giving up. I'm going to take another round here just to see something. He heads up to the parking lots behind the strip to scout alternative options. He hopes there'll be less heat here. <coughs> An unexpected visitor arrives. I don't know where these cops came from. This here could be some trouble. I'm gonna take another round here, just to see something. Armed robber Short Fuse is scoping out casinos on the Las Vegas Strip. 
I don't know where these cops came from. He may have to back off pronto. But this cop's just on routine patrol. <laughs> The recon has forced him to make a decision. These casinos are too risky. You're not likely to get away. There's way too many security guards everywhere, cops, surveillance, and um, it's not safe. You know, I want to actually get away with the money. Let's hit the freeway. Short Fuse needs to reassess his situation. But Trick Roller Vixen knows exactly where she'll strike. I like to go to the high roller casinos. That's where all the rich men are. Men that carry a lot of money. Racks. Thousands. Vegas is a great place to trick roll because you have so many guys that come out here and they just want to have some fun with the prostitutes. There is more trick rolling in Vegas than any other city worldwide. Trouble is, easy money comes with strings attached. The casinos or cops might catch her. And not every trick takes his robbery lying down. I have to worry about getting raped, getting killed, not coming home to my children. My best friend died doing this. She was just robbing a trick, it went bad, and he ended up shooting her in her head. There's a lot of girls out here that die. It's crazy. But a dark and troubled past prompts Vixen to keep rolling the dice. I was molested, I was raped in the home, so I ran away. And then everywhere I went, I was age 11, nothing but older guys, predators, would only try to me. So I became sexist. I hate men, so I want to take from any man, and I want what you got. And I'm about to get this money, and I hope Tonight, I'll make it back, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to make it back or not. Spotting the trick rollers tests the best security teams in Vegas. Casinos can't simply stop any woman who approaches a man. To protect their customers, they've had to innovate by putting boots on the ground. <laughs> Trick rollers come in, they victimize our guests, and I do not want them here. And if I catch them here, I will have them prosecuted. Tonight, Mike's trying to catch any trick rollers who come into the Plaza Casino. Working undercover gives Mike one huge advantage over camera surveillance. You have a lot of ability to see things that are going on in the surveillance department through your cameras, but when you're actually down on the floor and you can hear, that is one of the greatest tools for you because it becomes a lot easier to identify potential trick rolling going on. But to catch a trick roller, he has to think like one. When it comes to trick rolling, you kind of have to put yourself in the position of, a, like, if I were going to solicit somebody, who would I look for right now? And they look at it from an economic angle. They try to size you up economically on what they can steal from you. So they'll look for large buy-ins and maybe somebody with a lot of chips in front of them, you know, especially high-value chips, maybe $100 chips, $500 chips, somebody very well-dressed, they've got a Rolex on, or a lot of money out on the table. So I watch those potential targets and see if anybody approaches them. Mike doesn't just patrol the gaming floor. One of the hottest areas for trick rolling is the casino bar. 
And uh, one of the things we look at in a casino bar would be, uh, do we have to worry about any of our employees being in on it? I've had experiences at other properties where a particular bartender was approaching customers, seeing if they might actually be up for soliciting a prostitute. He would target people who were very inebriated, you know, and, and not exactly thinking too clear. As surveillance, we have to be suspicious of everything. While we don't find something every night, we just have to just constantly stay vigilant. We have to keep looking, keep watching, keep listening, because uh, it is out there and it does happen. And down the strip, it just did. Fixing's making a fast getaway from our first trick roll of the night. Whew. Security could be right behind her. <laughs> Vixen is making a fast getaway after robbing a John in a Vegas casino. Whew. She's managed to score big. Quick 300 in less than 15 minutes. It was a close call. Took him to the room, and things went bad. He was just too nosy in my business. And he ended up calling security. When I ran out with the cash, security was downstairs waiting for me. I almost got caught the But I got away. <laughs> but the close call won't end her night. I don't like blowing my cover, so I'm a little upset about security seeing my face. But I'm focused on the next victim right now. What casino am I going to go to? What guy and how much money he has? Anytime now, I can get cracked. Anytime I can get popped. But I'm addicted to it. So. I feel like I'm willing to take that chance every single time. It's a cold, cutthroat world. Sin City. Heightened casino security doesn't deter Vixen. But it has deterred a notorious underworld outfit that once ruled Vegas. There's an organization that I'm part of. Some people call it organized crime. Some people call it the mafia. I call it the family. Jimmy belongs to an East Coast mob family that's been in Vegas since the 40s. Like other mafia outfits, they had secret stakes in casinos that netted them millions. Then in the 70s and 80s, the FBI declared war. Forcing the mob out of the casinos. But not out of gambling altogether. That's where Jimmy comes in. What's going on? What are you looking to do? Baseball or uh, basketball? Jimmy is one of a network of unlicensed mob bookies who take illegal sports bets in Vegas. So you're looking at the hoops then? Okay. Today, he's collecting debts from last weekend's gambling. But there's a problem. Hello? What's happening? When are we going to settle up on that football figure? You gotta, you gotta let me know when you're gonna pull the trigger here. The gambler's saying he can't pay. No, 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 no. No, no, it's not going to carry over to next week. Okay, so, iron it out. Um, Go borrow it, do whatever you have to do, okay, you Jimmy gives the guy an hour to raise the cash. He needs to collect to earn, and bigger bets mean higher returns. I've taken bets as high as 10000 or more. I make my money on the juice, or they call it the vig, the vigorish, 10%. It's very lucrative. It's very lucrative. It's very consistent. It makes me every year 
uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Nationwide, the mob is still believed to be the biggest player in the illegal sports betting racket. My bookmaking operation is part of the organization's money. When somebody loses, the funds are distributed to certain people that, um, that are higher than me. It's big business, very, very big. Very, very big. For serious gamblers, Jimmy offers one huge advantage over the casinos. With the casino, everything is taxable. You know, on the wins, everything has to be reported to the IRS. But when somebody wins with us, the tax advantage is, is there is no taxes. But there is also a big disadvantage. When you owe money to the mob, things can get ugly. Sometimes uh, you have no, no choice but to apply pressure. People that look to take advantage of you have to be handled a certain way. It's really up to them. They choose their path. We don't choose it for them. Jimmy's about to find out which path the gambler who owes him money is fixing to take. At the end of the day, when somebody loses, I'm in the business to collect. I'm not Santa Claus. In the shadow of the Vegas Strip, mob bookie Jimmy is off to collect a betting debt. This particular guy right now, he's in a dilemma. I think he's got some personal issues going on. But then again, that's not my problem. Good, bad, or indifferent, it's settle up time. The gambler owes $2,000 for the bet, plus 200 for Jimmy's VIG, or fee. Jimmy hopes his mob ties will be persuasive. The reputation of, of, of the organization, of the family, it carries a lot of weight. People know you have to be willing to, uh, to pay the fiddler. How things turn out depend on the reaction Jimmy gets. I'm the type of guy, if you rub me the wrong way, then you're going to get um, a response uh, that uh, typically you really don't want. Broken arms, broken legs. Uh, broken shoulders, broken kneecaps. Sometimes uh, I can be very excessive. He's got his gambler in sight. All right, brother. What's going on, Jimmy? Not too much. How's everything? All right, how about you? Jimmy's ready for action. No, sir. Yeah, everything's good. But this time, the gambler comes up with the cash. Thank you. Appreciate it. And Jimmy will let him bet again. Okay. Thank I'm you, nice. So see you next week. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. Jimmy's account is now all settled. Trick Roller Vixen is also in the money. I've made altogether $2,000, and I feel great. <laughs> Last night, she robbed three casino customers. She risked their lives, those that Johns were unlikely to report getting rolled. More than likely, he's married when he comes to Vegas, and he doesn't want to expose the fact that he was trying to get a prostitute, so he's not going to say anything to the police. I wouldn't, you know, advise anybody to do it, but coming from where I come from, I'd rather rob his ass than lay down and give him all this. I got to take what I need. For Vixen, it's business as usual again tonight.
But after his recent scouting of the Strip, armed robber Short Fuse is changing his tactics. I've decided to scope out smaller suburban casinos. I think we still can make anywhere from a quarter million to a million dollars off each robbery. But I've learned that the security is a lot less uh, in the smaller casinos. Even small targets need careful selection. In the suburbs, as you can see, the streets aren't that busy. So you kind of stick out like a sore thumb after the robbery's over with and you're trying to get away. So you mainly want to pay attention to escape routes. Short Fuse is looking for casinos near major road systems. If security gives chase, they'll struggle to guess which route he takes. This one here looks good because I'm noticing even as we're pulling up, the freeway's there. You see the freeway's there. You have a getaway route to the right. You have also a getaway route to the left. You can basically get a feel for the casino as soon as you pull in. I see security up close to the door. That's one first security I saw. There's usually a truck riding around surveillance. He's here somewhere, but there's not a lot of security. This may be one that we take down on our next score. I like it. I like it. <sighs> Short Fuse could hit the jackpot with such a casino, if he's careful. Meanwhile, casino crime fighters like Ted Whiting. How does the shot look in poker? Table 36. Are always improving their defenses. The casino industry is working on some really advanced technology to help me and my team catch criminals. In the future, we'll look for anomalies in data. And look for anomalies in, in human behavior. And tell if we're in danger or not. Computerized threat detection will revolutionize casino crime fighting. But for now, Ace Face and his partner Bim have beaten the odds and they're cashing out. 55. We have 5,500 here. Year and a half, 2,700. Sweet. All there? Great couple days. Excellent couple days. All right. I want to get in the car and get out of town. It feels great knowing that I was able to uh, outsmart the casinos again. The, all the moves were clean and the town's ready to come back. Yes, we'll be back for sure. Is he even telling us to come back soon? Oh, yeah. I promise we will.